Hey YouTube, Target Popper here. Here we have the model 1916 French Berthier. Still in its original 8x50R LaBelle round. It's the round with the neat little rim on the inside of the base. Pretty neat. Now, this is a long rifle. This is not one of the carbines. Uh, this family of rifles did start life as a carbine. They were based off of the 1886 LaBelle, which used a tubular magazine and not the uh, Manlicher clip system. Now this particular family of rifle, the Berthier, started life as just a three-shot rifle. It didn't have this pot belly here. It just had this three-round internal magazine. Uh, and the, in fighting, they kind of realized that the three rounds wasn't really enough. It wasn't even on par with the Mauser or Steyr's or anything else out at that point in time. It was dwarfed by guns like the Lee Enfield and even their own LaBelle rifle. So in 1916 they started issuing these rifles with these extended magazines so they could at least hold five. So that really kind of breathed new life into the rifle and really gave the French riflemen a uh, kind of a boost in morale and firepower. Uh, a couple other guns uh, the 1886 LaBelle definitely influenced guns like the Mosin Nagan. I mean, their bolts are almost identical. Their biggest difference is the, the Mosin Nagan. Instead of using a screw, this entire section became kind of an action bar that runs the entire bottom of the uh, bolt. And that's how they decided to keep the uh, bolt head on. There's a guide bar at the bottom. So. Pretty strong actions. The 8x50 is no slouch. It's going pretty quick and it's hurling a pretty hefty piece of lead. Um, I do have some ammo on the way along with some clips. And I will be buying some dies here in the next couple weeks so I can start reloading for it. Um, you can soup them up pretty hot. Um, definitely you don't want to exceed uh, recommended powder charges, but still, they can handle quite a bit. Um, I ended up selling my VZ-52. I wasn't doing anything with it. It wasn't really doing anything for me. It was just kind of sat in the corner of the safe and I never did anything. So I ended up taking that to the gun show. I figured somebody else might enjoy that rifle and somebody uh, somebody ended up buying it for me. So I used the money and I bought this rifle here. And I couldn't really be any happier. This is the, we can hopefully see on the side there, St. NTN. I'm probably killing that spelling. MLE M16 M16. So yeah, pretty cool. It's got that huge front sight with the notch cut. I guess that's some sort of night sight. Kind of weird. That's the lowest sight setting right there for your rear sights is that notch. Here is another battle sight. Here we go. Here's another battle sight for extended ranges. Then it starts off from 9 and goes up to 24. Pretty optimistic. Odds are that's just meant for volley fire though. Pretty neat. So we're going to take it apart. We're really not going to take apart the trigger group or the magazine assembly. There's no reason to in my opinion. Um, it's fairly com it's, it's pretty complicated and you'll see that once we uh, dig into the gun a little bit more. Trying a different spot in the shop because the camera does not want to agree with me. I, de I definitely need a new camera. Um, a couple screwdrivers you might need. Flathead. And then I modified a flathead to have those French prongs. Um, a lot of the screws on these rifles are flathead, but a lot of them are those prong kind of uh, kind of deals. So, gun is empty. This one is not ball end marked. Um, but you can definitely reload for them perfectly safe, uh, safely. I have the hiccups. You can reload for them perfectly safely. So we're going to take out this screw here. Out of the bolt. Right here where this scallop is, I'm going to put it right in about the middle for, so the locking lugs are in the middle of it. Rotate the locking or the bolt head down. Then gently pull back the bolt. And your bolt head will be left in the rifle. Now we can take out the bolt itself. Pretty simple. We'll take that apart last. Put all 
these pieces aside. Next, we'll take the barrel bands off. To remove the front barrel band, push in that button, rotate your barrel band upside down, just like that. Next, the lower band, push in the spring, and then you should be able to work this forward. There's that. Set those aside. Now don't try to reef up on your uh, handguard because you might break it. They're pretty, pretty thin pieces of wood. What you want to do, stand up your rear sight leaf, pull this guy forward, set your elevator all the way up, rotate it, and pull it straight up. These do have dowels that they inserted. Similar guns like the uh, Moss 36, those have that same kind of setup. And now here, we can see when it was manufactured. We can see the serial number as well. None of the serial numbers match. That's pretty common with these guns. The French ran a pretty hefty recycling program. So they did a lot of work to them over the years. <clears throat> Anywho, let's keep going. It's actually a pretty simple gun to do. This screw right here holds your magazine and trigger assembly because there's a pillar that goes straight up into the receiver. And I'll show you that here in a minute. A lot of these rifles will also have pretty dark bores. Um, just, how, just how it is. A lot of these were left in the field. And then later on, they were picked up by uh, French soldiers, so couldn't get cleaned right away. Next, we're going to take out the screw behind the trigger guard. And once the clips and all that stuff get here, we'll definitely be doing some shooting videos because these, you don't really get to shoot these a lot. Ammo isn't thick on the ground like it used to be, and the ammo that is there that you can still buy in bulk is basically all dead. So you can just take out your entire magazine trigger group assembly. This pillar is the one that runs all the way up. And that screw that removed first out of the action is the one that goes right there. So again, we're not going to take this apart. I personally don't see a reason to. Um, you can definitely get everything with a toothbrush and a rag. Um, if there's enough interest in this, if you guys leave some comments or something, I can do a separate video for this piece. Uh, I probably won't be drifting out the leaf springs. These are almost 100 years old. And actually, they may be over 100 years old based on the French recycling program. So there's no reason nowadays to take that apart. Now, don't lift the rifle out of the stock yet because you don't want to do any damage here. There's one more screw that you have to take out in order to get the rifle out of the stock. It's this one right here. There will be... A plate, they'll be, depending on when your rifle was built or who rebuilt it or whatever, you can have any variety of screws here. You can have the double prong screw or you could have just a flat head. This one has both. So right here, take out this front one, which is just a flat head. It comes right out. Ta -da. Set that aside, rotate the entire rifle back over. Now we can lift it straight out of the stock. And there it is. That's the Moss, or not the Moss, but the MLE 16 completely taken apart. Besides the trigger group, I guess we can do the bolt now. Um, I do have a small shim in here to tighten up the action. As you may have noticed, there's no front action screw. All your action screws are back here what your trigger guard and trigger or your magazine assembly locks into is a hook right here. Ooh, here we go. It's a hook. And then spring pressure from your trigger group kind of tightens everything up too. So there's no front action screw. The action screw is just through the wood, through that plate, into there. So it's pretty unique. Um, over time though, if your stock starts to shrink or if you have a replacement stock, 
it may not be fit exactly right and it may be a little loose so I put a little shim right up here underneath the receiver and that tightened everything up pretty good. So we'll put we'll take apart the bolt now. The bolts can be a pain in the butt but they're not bad. Um, Snowmo's Nagan bolt. A little bit more complicated. Pretty much what we do. Rotate it. I like to kind of grab so I have some part of my hand through this uh, divot here, the scallop. Pull down. Maybe if I can get that. Got to rotate that end piece here. I guess the best way to explain that is you'll have an indexing mark on the back of your cocking piece and this uh, kind of flathead kind of uh, line. What you want to do is line those two marks up and this firing pin retainer piece can be slotted out. Then you take your cocking piece off, take out your firing pin and the spring. As you can see that end piece grabs hold of your firing pin. So again, that's it. Not much to it. Now would the French soldier be allowed to take the rifle apart this far in the field? I don't know. I don't know if there was some sort of uh, regulation that said they couldn't. But the French used a lot of these guys for a reason. So Anyway, let's put the gun back together. We'll start with the bolt. Just take all of our pieces. Line them back up in a somewhat familiar order. This part is kind of tricky. There we are. Now we can rotate that out of the way. That's your main part of your bolt. That's the hard part. Make you look back up. Rotate our handguard ring. Put it back in here. Gently. We can take that rear action screw. Put it back in place. There's a lot of variety with these guns. Um, a lot of that uh, recycling program that I've been mentioning here and there, the French kind of at some points just said whatever and started just grabbing parts and throwing them into rifles and if they worked and they were basically the same model, well that was good enough. That should be pretty snug. Next we can take our trigger guard and magazine assembly. Make sure this hook piece catches on that bar at the front of the receiver that I mentioned. And push up. Let me take this screw here. Not the most elegant design, but it was sort of rushed into service. So you gotta give them a little credit for that, that they got a good rifle out in pretty hasty time. Tighten that up nice. Yeah, when I got this rifle, before I put that shim in there, you could actually take the barrel and separate the whole thing and it just rattled all, all terribly bad. So I'm hoping that'll help it out. Stand up our rear sight. Place our handguard on. Slide it back into position. There's that. Next we can slide on our barrel bands. Hopefully you can kind of see it. Your ring goes on the le left side of the rifle. Push up on that spring. And there it is. Next we can put the front barrel band on. Make sure you put it on upside down. So this piece here will line up with your front sight and then you can rotate it in place pushing that button there's that barrel band I did forget one of the action screws so we'll put this action screw in here I've always wanted one of these rifles 
And I'd always wanted a VZ52, but my VZ52 just it just didn't speak to me, so I just uh, ended up getting rid of it. So I'm much happier with this gun. I like to test out to make sure that everything's lined up on these beforehand. If it is, your bolt head will slot back on. If it's not, you'll have to rotate your firing pin because it needs to go in a certain way. You can see how that's kind of ovular or oval, ovalish, ovalier. Next, we'll take the bolt head, drop it in, push, make sure we're at that scallop, rotate it. Sometimes you need to help it along a little bit. Be very careful not to damage the wood. Whoops. That's a pretty important step. You definitely want to drop your screw. Okay. There we are. Now don't over tighten this screw because what will happen on this particular rifle, that screw binds on that uh, firing pin and will lock up the whole thing. I can actually show you. I'll over tighten it real quick. If I over tighten it, well, now look what happens. So, this needs to be pretty loose. Notice how it all sucked back up. Notice how everything works again. So don't over tighten this. I know you might feel like you have to, but it shouldn't be very tight. If you want to, you can put a little lock tight in there and just let it set. That way you don't lose it. Anyway, that's that. These have a pretty long history to them. The French ended up using these for a very long time, and so did her colonies. And in fact, these rifles are used well into World War II. Whether or not the French liked them at that point it didn't really matter. They needed them. So, <clears throat> pretty interesting firearm. I haven't shot this one yet. The bore is dark, the rifling is strong, and the crown is pretty tight. Um, I know my, uh, I was, I'm going to start reloading for it, and I've got some 321 Hornady bullets, and I know the gun won't like those at all. But I'm thinking if I can get some 323s, probably be right on. I need to mic this bullet and see exactly what it is. This is a ball end cartridge, so it should be like 326. But who knows? Um, this actually, this round here has a story. I brought this rifle into the local gun shop, and I had always seen this cartridge. He had it on his shelf for a pretty long time, and uh, he told me this last time that I went in there with this gun that uh, GI was over there, USGI. The veteran came and tell, told him the story. It was getting shot at by a German who was using some French rifle in this caliber, be it a Berthier or a Labelle. Well, apparently that veteran shot a little straighter, and this was the round, one of the rounds he picked up off that German. So he came in and dropped this round off at the local gun shop a few years back, and I asked him how much he wanted for it, and he said just to take it, and I was like, all right, so... This is a pretty neat piece of history in itself. This was made in 1939, so definitely a ball end cartridge. So anyway, uh, I guess one of the modifications that they did in order for these rifles to fire the ball end was to open up the chamber a slight tad, so it'll chamber right. So if you get one of these rifles and you try to stuff some ball end in it and it's tight, that's because the gun hasn't been rechambered. So anyway, thanks for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed. And once we get some um, clips and some ammo in, which hopefully will be here by the end of the week, we'll do some shooting with it. See what it'll do. So, ooh, another little thing on the magazine. You got a cute little trap door. That way, when you reload, your empty clip will fall at the bottom, and you'll keep all the mud and grime of World War I out of your magazine. <clears throat> so that's pretty neat. So anyway, thanks for watching. Like, share, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed.